So today we're going to give you a tour of the inside of our truck. Yeah, that's coming up right after this. Hi everybody, I'm Judy. And I'm Jim, and welcome to It's a Highway Vlog, where you get to travel the country with us, and you don't even have to leave your happy home. So, while you're at your home, join us on a tour of our Home on Wheels. And while you're doing that, don't forget to like this video, hit that little subscribe button right there, and don't forget to ring that little ring. notification bell. What are you ringing for? It's my job. I'm sorry. So you don't miss a thing. Hey, good morning, everybody. We are finally going to get around and do the truck tour video that we've talked about here for a while. So Judy is holding the camera and I am going to go through the front of the truck. Hi, everybody. Yeah, she's there. <laughs> And then uh, I'm going to hold the camera and let her show her Vanna White uh, you know, impression. <laughs> impression in the back and, and show everything back there. So we just thought we'd split it up, you know. So anyway, this with is both of truck. us chiming in from time to time, whoever's behind the camera, like interrupting Jim all the time. I'm so good at that. Yes, she is. So anyway, uh, this is our truck. This is a 2015 Freightliner Cascadia. Uh, we've had the truck since it was new. It now has about 750,000 miles on it. So it has the lived-in look. Yes. So it's it's not new, not a new truck, uh, but it's a very well-maintained used truck. Uh, so there's a little, you know, a little dirt here and there. But uh, like I said, we didn't do really anything too special to clean the truck up for this. This is just the way it looks most of the time. And so now we're just going to go through everything that's up here and show you what we do and how we live our life every day. Uh, Along with our little stupid stuff that we get that just collects stuff sometimes. Right. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, start out with the steering wheel, obviously. This is our turn signal. Uh, in the Freightliners this model year, the actual windshield wiper controls are uh, over let here. Me, let me get a close-up of this. All right. Doing my video job. Whoops. Sorry about that. Seasickness. <laughs> our headlight controls are here for our marker lights and for our headlights here. Um, on the steering wheel itself, we actually have the controls for our cruise control. Oh, little, little close up there. On the left hand side here, we've got our on and off, cancel the cruise, the acceleration and deceleration. Uh, on this side, uh, we have engine brake. Uh, it actually a three position engine brake. We actually control whether it's high, medium or low with this rocker switch here on the dash. Uh, usually we just leave it in the middle. It seems to work pretty well. The plus and minus signs, this is a LCD screen, uh, which I don't have a key, so I won't show you that. Uh, but this lights up with some information here, and this allows us to scroll back and forth between the screens. This little button right here flashes our marker lights on and off. Uh, so if we get passed by a truck, we can say thank you that way. This is actually our gear shift, believe it or not. This is an automatic 10-speed uh, uh, ultra shift transmission. Uh, and basically it's just a slide. So if I want to go forward, I put it in drive. If I want to go backwards, I put it in R. Uh, we hardly ever use the low, but this would actually put it in first gear. When we start in drive here, it actually starts in second gear and then automatically it'll go through. Uh, you can also shift this little slider here over Oops. to where we actually are uh, in manual. So I can shift it manually. And the way you do that, if you want to shift up, you pull back on it. You want to shift down, you push forward on it. Um, and so that's basically the gear shift. Nothing complicated. It's not like an 18 speed, you know, that we've got a clutch. There is no clutch in this truck. Um, I don't even know if she there. can see. Judy's <laughs> shoes are down there. There's our brake pedal and our accelerator um, for the truck. Um, that's all the pedals. There's no clutch pedal. Uh, starting over here at these gauges, this is the actual air pressure when we apply our brakes. Uh, it shows you how much air pressure or when we apply the brakes. This here is for our rear airbag pressure uh, on the back of the truck so we can gauge, you know, pretty much how much of a load we have on the truck. Uh, this is our tachometer, water temperature gauge, fuel gauge, and our death gauge. There's four little lights that light up here that show, uh, you know, how much death we've got left in when our the tank. truck's on. When the truck's on, of course. <laughs> our speedometer. I can't get that steering wheels in the way. Oh, there we go. Speedometer, and then this is our oil pressure gauge. So these are 
pretty much our most important gauges. You definitely want to keep an eye on the water temperature and the oil pressure. Uh, and then we actually have two air systems on the truck. One's a primary and one's a secondary. The primary would be the brakes. Uh, the secondary would be like our air ride for our uh, sleeper and for our seats and everything else. They sort of work in tandem, but you will get different pressures on those. Um, it will run all the way up to 140 pounds. And then as it slowly gets back down to 100 pounds, as like, you know, the airbags are losing air or whatever going down the road, then the, the governor will kick in and it'll actually build back up to 140 pounds. So keep an eye on those. Those are probably our most important gauges. Uh, then moving on from there, we've got controls for, uh, there is a light down here in the bottom for our footwell. It shows up red. Judy hates it. Every time it turns on, she says, why is that light on? No, it's it's one of those things. Now let's, let's get this straight. And I'm sorry, I'm interrupting you again. But if there is to be a light on, in the truck and home, wherever we're at, it gets left on. And of course, I like to save electricity, which Jim laughs at me when we're in the truck, saving electricity. But <laughs> it's just like when a light's on, it's like, I wanna go shut it off. When a light switch is there, Jim wants to turn it on. So I get, I, when the red light's on, it's obvious because it's red. Now I'm gonna turn the truck on, but you're gonna have an air buzzer warning. Uh, although you may not get it, but you'll get to see all the lights. So if you wanna come up here and look at the gauge, so this is what we see when we turn the truck on. If I can, try and get around it. Yeah. Oh, well, that was annoying. <laughs> that sound you heard was the air warning buzzer light. I forgot when we pulled in here last night, we dropped the air out of the bags. Uh, so that's just something we do. Uh, it possibly might have leaked off at some point in time. But anyway, uh, low air pressure. So that will happen if it, air pressure gets below 60 pounds. So I started the truck up. And now I'll uh, turn the key on again. There'll be a slight buzz at the very beginning, and then that'll go away, and then I can show you. I'm not going to start the truck. I'm just going to turn the key on. So there's the buzzer. That's the same buzzer we will get, and then that will go away. And uh, okay. Let it go through its gyration. It has to go through its little gyration. So uh, we come up. This is the uh, screen I was telling you about earlier that we can go through various different settings here uh, we've got uh, you know it'll show us how much uh, miles per gallon we're getting uh, oil pressure some uh, oil temperature here uh, a turbo boost gauge this will have our voltage um, and I'm just scrolling through these time and temperature this is the one we leave it on most of the time and when then I leave a gauge for our miles per hour so we, That's fun to play with yeah, when we, you're driving down the well, road. Well, we normally get 10 and a half, but uh, the last time we filled up, we haven't really went that far. And so we were up and down mountains and sitting, waiting for customers to show up. So yeah, it's down a little bit. Uh, this is the death gauge I was telling you about. It's all lit up like a Christmas tree. All lit up Christmas tree. So those four bars, and it's usually what will happen is when the first bar goes off, then we'll get that the next time. It works out to about every third time we fill up the truck, we'll get that. And here's our air gauges here showing the pressure like right now it's at 140 pounds on each system and then here's the light that judy hates it's hard to see in the daytime but it's a reddish glow down there she always complains about that this button here is for our four-way flashers we turn that on and all the flashers on the truck work so and i'll just move across these here this is uh, like i said earlier this is the controls for our jake brake uh the different settings this would be low and then high uh, this will actually do a regen on the engine. We have only ever done one of those on this truck since we've had it. And what happens is you'll see the big truck set the truck stops and idle all weekend. Well, that's not good on these engines. Um, eventually, they'll want to regen, um, and we have to push this. It just revs the, the engine up really, really high, so it burns off all the soot and stuff that collects in the after uh, exhaust after treatment system. We don't do that. Uh, so this is an override for the engine shutdown. If something major bad happens to the truck, it'll throw up three lights on the screen and it'll turn the truck off after 30 seconds. But you can actually, by pushing on this, you can actually delay that for another 30 seconds. It's basically a safety feature to get out of the, uh, of the way of, you know, if you're in the middle of traffic and you need to go off the road. We've actually used this. We had our turbocharger went out a couple years ago, had to use that to get off the road. This is for uh, traction control, for wheel spin. It's just a toggle switch also. 
This menu back button controls the screen up here. This is, there's a uh, setting you can get into to look at some diagnostic stuff. Uh, and that just basically scrolls you through that screen there. Um, the, uh, this is something else to do with the hillside assist. Our truck, when we pull up, if we're setting on a hill, uh, you'll notice that a lot of times, you know, trucks let off, you gotta pop the clutch, you know, to keep yourself from rolling backwards. Our engine and uh, transmission work together. It will actually hold us on the hill for three seconds when I take my foot off the brake. This is an override for that. This is mirror heat. Our large mirrors on the outside of the truck have mirror are heated inside of those. So that is awesome. Yeah, in the winter time, if it gets co uh, covered up and everything, it's just a toggle switch. Turn it on and off. Turns the heater on for the windows. Uh, and this utility lamp is actually for the lights in the box of our truck. We have two large LED lights back there. And this just turns it on and off. These are our controls for our uh, for the fan, heat, air conditioning, and then this is just you know from defrost to front facing to everything. All the fans. All the fans. Where they pressure out at or whatever. Right. This is just a, a lighter plug. Uh, we have a small inverter up here. Just let me get back uh, a little bit to get that. And we just keep various things plugged in here. Uh, this is for the GPS. Uh, this is for my phone. This is the GPS. This is for my phone charging. Judy charges her phone up here. Various different cables. We have a, a USB cable here that charges our headsets. And one for my Fitbit. And one for Judy's <laughs> Fitbit. Yeah, her Fitbit charger right there. So we have those. Uh, and then I'll come back up here. This is a switch that actually, this is how we drop our airbags. Uh, it, the rear of the truck has large airbags back there that, for the air ride. And so we can actually drop that. Like if we pull into a dock, we'll usually drop the airbags. Uh, that way, if they do accidentally run a fork truck on our truck, it doesn't really damage those. So we just drop those. And a lot of times when we know we're going to be parked for the weekend, like this weekend, we'll drop the air out. Uh, so these are just some auxiliary switches that nothing is actually hooked up to. <laughs> They're just like extra. Um, this is our combination radio, GPS, backup camera system. Um, we do use that. Unfortunately, the cameras are not working right at the moment. Uh, we need to get those fixed. This is just a little toggle button that allows you to go back and forth between our box camera and our backup camera. Now, can, can I mention what the two buttons down there are for? No, you may not. <laughs> These are, this is actually just a bogus button. Uh, this is actually what would supply the trailer air supply if we had a trailer, which obviously we don't. Um, we do have a parking brake, and this is what we set when we're parked. Uh, it's just an air valve in and out. Um, uh, this really shouldn't even be on our truck. Most state trucks don't have this, but for whatever reason, we did. Our truck was, you know, they all these trucks start a life as a uh, day cab tractor. And for whatever reason, we got that. Uh, so this is our GPS, our problem child GPS at the moment. Uh, I don't even have it turned on. Um, so we're looking to replace yeah, that. That's a problem child. But we'll see. Oh, there we go. So this is a Ram McNally uh, TND tablet. We've had it for almost five years. Uh, what Judy wanted to show you is our mounting system here. That's this is actually Jim's. a magnetic base. Uh, and then uh, you can see this is where it just mounts. It's just magnetic. It goes on there like that. Pull it off if you need to. Well, I didn't want to use one of the suction cup things because they just are problematic. So we had done this in the tr prior truck. So I just tucked these two screws out. The trip to Lowe's, bought some of these little brackets, screwed them together. Uh, there's a screw in the back side of this. So that's actually bolted to the rear of this. And so it works fine. It keeps it right there. It keeps the GPS right where you don't have to look too far away from your line of sight onto the highway. Uh, it doesn't block anything out in front. Uh, so that works out really well for us. It's not attached to the windshield, so there's no DOT violation with that. You cannot have anything attached to your windshield six inches below uh, the top or in your line of sight where the wipers wipe. And so a lot of times guys will put GPSs up there and they're actually, you could be fined by the G, by the DOT. Uh, yeah, the GPS police. Mm. <laughs> uh, so that works there. Um, I guess we'll cover this stuff and then we'll just sort of go around the top. Uh, this is our Amerascan data recorder. 
This actually, there are four temperature probes in the box of the truck and one on the outside Let of the truck. See if I can give close up. We, I don't know if you can see anything yeah. there. There you go. And so this will actually display the temperatures of our probes, and these are in Celsius. Most of the loads we haul are Celsius loads. So this is four degrees Celsius, which is about 39, 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Which is about what it is. Uh, well, it's actually 7.5 out right now. Yeah, so that'd be about 50. Uh, so nice day here in New Jersey. Different scrolling through here. And then we do have settings and everything else. This is a small printer. I'll just print something for you here. Printer, current temperature. Get to it. Nope, don't want a historical. There we go. Yes. So Don't this, uh, a lot of times the customers will want to print out of this. It will actually record over usually 15 minutes and it will display the temperatures on this tape. As you can see right there, that's actually the temps in the box. Uh, so Currently, without a reefer running. Right, without a reefer running. You know, it's, it's cold here. Uh, so anyway. It's not that cold, it's 50. <laughs> this is the actual Thermal King. Uh, we call it the TCU. It's a temperature control unit controller. This is how we turn our reefer unit on and off from inside the truck. Uh, I know on the bigger trucks, uh, you know, the guys have to actually get outside and it's on the side of the trailer. Well, we actually cheat. It's on the inside. Yay uh, for us. So we set our, our set point here, uh, you know, and, and this just controls the on and off. Um, it'll show us the temperature uh, and it's just nice to have. Yeah, so. it's nice because when we're going down the road, you know, we don't have to stop and make sure everything's doing okay. And, right. you know, um, and I'm not sure what the tractor and trailers do because obviously we haven't driven one. Right. So anyway, this little piece of equipment right here is our Omnitrax unit. We like to call it the C-Link, which is what it actually used to be. <laughs> it has voice <laughs> command on it, but uh, we never use that. Mainly because we don't really know how to get it activated. Whatever you just said, activated well, it. If I say, hello, Omnitrax, well, then it doesn't work. Would you like to continue? No. Okay. And it doesn't say fine. <laughs> this is actually, uh, it, this machine performs several functions for us. We have text messaging on Goodbye. here. Goodbye. This is where we keep our hours of service. Um, so, you know, you've heard about logging and everything. This is where we actually do it on our unit. Uh, we actually have navigation on here. We get some messages and stuff from time to time from FedEx that come through. We can do a vehicle inspection at the end of our day here. Also, and document, the form, it, yeah. document it. Uh, you know, this is where all of our messages come through with, uh, you know, pop up alert. No, no. Oh, no. Um, Don't do that. So it's proprietary information. So, uh, and then, but the navigation unit here, uh, we automatically, when we get dispatched on a load, get the mapping information across the C-Link and you can see little red box there, or that's where we're gonna be taken. We're here in Bordentown, New Jersey. And when we leave on Monday, we're gonna head west this way to head up to our load. It's about uh, 75 miles away from us. So yeah, 76.7 miles away from us. Uh, that's where we're going to go. As and you down can, there is what time we'll get there. Yeah, this is our estimated time of arrival if we left now. Uh, so that's our Omnitrax unit. Uh, that uh, allows it, us to communicate with FedEx. If and, you can see the top, it's the driver's hours is up there too. And and you can change to the regular time. Right. So so that's a C-Link. We rely on that quite a bit. Uh, it can be problematic at times, but, you know, whatever. Uh, so I guess we'll move up a little ways here uh i don't know if judy can see me or not we have a light switch that controls the lights back in our box on and off here uh if you notice this wooden shelf this is actually a shelf we keep a lot of stuff up here this is our permit there. book got some road atlases up here kleenex boxes uh come across here this is our clipboard we keep all of our load information when we're running a run on here Keep our completed bills and everything here. Uh, and so it's just wooden. It's just a tray. It's about three inches deep in there. So it, it comes in handy. That is a feature unique to the double A sleepers. Uh, so we're really fortunate and glad to have that. This truck does not have a closet in it. When it was made, we went with countertops. You'll see that when Judy does the back. So we actually uh, just went to Walmart and bought us some coat hooks and they work pretty well. And we keep all of our coats and jackets behind the here. seats or sweatshirts yeah that take up so much room in the covered spaces yeah. we've got uh, a couple of little cupboards uh, here little storage cubbies i guess with a little net on them 
Uh, we keep a scanner in there, eyeglasses, uh, sunglasses. This is where we keep our IDs. Yeah, where the sunglasses are supposed to go. <laughs> where the sunglasses are supposed to go. There's a little cupboard in here um, that's lockable. We just keep, I don't know, there's a couple little things in there. Nothing really major. Yeah, nothing we use very often because I couldn't tell you what was in there. Our CB radio, the microphone for that. We don't use the CB really that much. Uh, but we do have it in the truck for emergencies and everything else. We have another cubby here. Uh, lights that light up when we get in and out of the truck where we can turn those on there's also a smaller map light red light at night mm -hmm. uh, or, or for Christmas you know yeah. but there's a smaller light no green here. lights there's a small one there there's that so all those uh, the big light there does come on at night when we get in the truck um, so trying to look up here if you look up in the in the window and I want to do a separate video about this at one point in time um, we have easy pass and prepass and easy pass uh, allows us to prepay the tolls on the turnpikes uh, so we do a lot of traffic over the Pennsylvania Turnpike Ohio Turnpike Indiana Turnpike uh, all the turnpikes so we can prepay that in advance and it's automatically taken out so we don't have to stop at toll booths all the time Prepass allows us to bypass the way stations. They get our information. If they want us to come in, we get a signal on here. It'll light up green usually uh, when we pass the way station, which means we're, we're clear to go. We don't have to go in. Uh, you see trucks all the time. I know you see signs driving down the road, and it says all trucks must enter, and then trucks are always flying by, and you're going, well, what are they doing? Well, they're getting prepassed around. If this flash is red, then we have to go in. Uh, so we get pulled in, and it's based and tied to our carrier's safety rating, and FedEx Custom Critical has a very high safety rating, so much so that we only get pulled in about every 20th scale. That's the average. It's knock on wood. 5%. Safety out there, ladies and gentlemen. Right. It's a 5% pull-in rate for us, which isn't bad. So we only go into the scales about every 20th time. Uh, and usually, you know, they really don't pay too much attention to us smaller trucks for whatever reason. Uh, and so they usually just let you us better be knocking way. on some really hard wood up there. Well, it's just been our experience. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we do have curtains that we can pull around to the front of the truck. Privacy curtains. They're over here on the sides. I don't know if you can see those. Here, let me. I was going to say. But those pull around, and they pull all the way around from both sides, meet in the middle. And so that, grow together. we like to put those out on the weekends. Uh, just simply because it gives us a little more usable room, I guess. Uh, so I'll put those back later. And of course our seats. Um, the seat on the passenger side is identical to the one on the driver's side. And you can I see I don't here, even think I'm getting the seat. <laughs> I don't think you're getting the seat. So anyway, there's just controls here for up and down. We tend to leave most of the air out of our seats when we ride. Uh, so just various controls. There's padding. Uh, bladders that are inside these that, it, that you know you can raise up basically for you know support and everything yeah they you got know, the low lumbar support and the right. you know the air that comes in but we've just them. about wore these seats out uh, at some point in time if we were going to keep the truck we would probably put new seats in it I'm not really for sure if that's gonna happen we are from what I understand looking at possibly getting a new truck in March but we'll just see from that uh, so anything else up here you can think of White? No, I think that's it. So I'm probably making people seasick going up and Yeah, down. we do have uh, automatic door locks. We have automatic windows on both sides. And yes, that Ohio State sticker is extremely important. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but there we go. So we'll switch over and we'll show you the back. And just in case you ever want to know where we're at in a truck stop, if you see a Donate Life flag hanging in the front, that's us. That's usually us, yes. Or the praying bear, one or the other. Or their little praying bear. Yes, we've had this little guy for about seven years. So uh, so yeah. anyway, uh, we got that at a church down in Florida, and we've just taken it with us. So that's our yeah, little they gave it to us. trademark. All the rest of the trucks look the same, but ours, you know, a little different. Just so showing you a little different. We'll move on and do the back now. All right. Yep. Well, it's my turn, I guess. I get the back of the truck. The one with the most stuff in it. Uh, we'll start out here with the microwave convection oven. And uh, if you, some of you may have already watched the video where we had to replace ours. Um, so this is our new microwave convection oven. And up here we do baking, 
microwaving. Um, actually, there's convection, which is the oven part of it. Grill. You can grill, roast, and then there's the power button that's uh, for the microwave part of it. Defrost, your normal, all your normal microwave things, popcorn, potato, beverage, dinner plate, fresh vegetable, frozen vegetable, roast chicken, cake, and pizza. And truth be told, I've never used those buttons, but we may have a video in the future on how to use it because we do use the convection oven and the grill and um, those type of things on here. So we, we may in the future develop a video of that. So that's our convection oven. And as you can see, we have countertop over here and our sink along with our diffuser that I put in the thing so it doesn't get all over the place. And when we're not moving, I'll put it up on the thing. But um, our oils that I keep out all the time because I use them all the time. And then just- Those are our essential oils. Right? Our essential oils, yes, right. yes. And this one I have in here right now, which is Holiday Joy, or Peace, sorry, which I love the smells of. So that's what makes our park smell good if you ever come into the truck. And uh, back here, we just use one of these just with our salt and pepper and things we usually normally use most often. It's got my, my earbuds in it and stuff for back here. And the countertop looks different sometimes when we're sitting versus when we're going down the road because some of this stuff gets put away. But um, I have my charger back here instead of up front. And this is a diffuser. And we put this in, correct? Right. They, it usually just comes with the two thing, but these are really cool. We got them on both sides of the trucks. So we just use too much electricity. <laughs> we use too much. We plug in too much stuff. And we use this type of mat and it keeps things from sliding, you know, around. We just bought much. that at Walmart. Yep. Just one of those rolled up things that we bought at Walmart. And over here is the control panel. And I'll let Jim kind of, I can point, but he can talk about it. Okay. At the top is our, uh, air conditioning control panel there. Uh, it's just a, a slider at the top. So uh, we turn it over to, uh, if it was turned all the way to the left where it says system there, that would be the air conditioning. If we turn it on, it'll probably come on. We've had yeah. a heater on in here. Uh, so that's how we turn the air conditioning on and off. Uh, to your left hand side there uh, is the uh, control for the fantastic fan. We have a fantastic fan in here. That's a remote control. We can open and close the fan. Uh, get a little fresh air. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, and then next to that is our generator control panel. We can turn the generator on and off. Right now it's set the manual. Did if I you want the keys down? No. I did want to turn the truck on. So uh, you can turn that to auto on. It'll automatically come on. But turn it back to manual, please. There we go. It'll, it'll turn on and it'll be really noisy. You won't be able to hear. So... Below that is the on and off switch for the inverter, that black box there. Yep. And that's just uh, turns our inverter on and off. And then next to that is the switch for our water pump. Uh, for our sink here, we actually have a lovely sink. In the cabinet below is actually a, uh, a water pump in there. We're not gonna open the cabinet because you can't see anything. It's stacked full of stuff. And then we have a water heater where we can have hot water and um, that's actually off, believe it or not. Uh, the way it's wired, it's wired weird. Um, so we have hot water in the truck. So yep. so back to you, wife. Back to me. Well, I don't know where, where to go next. I guess over here to the left side. Go to the left side. I don't know. This, obviously, is our TV. Right. <laughs> and we have our vitamins out and supplements out that we do. Um, and just, like I said, things normally that don't maybe sit out or sitting out now. Uh, baby wipes and things like that we just use to clean up real quick. Jim's laptop, and I know he'll go into this in a later video, but this is our internet. Um, I don't know all about that. Jim knows more about that. And again, another one of our outlets, electrical outlets, things that we have. And we also have up here, cram full of extraneous junk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is our junk drawer, top, no kidding. Just we have a Blu-ray um, disc player and then a dish, a satellite dish thing here. And our dish, by the way, is on top of our truck. Right. All right. And that is actually an in-motion satellite dish where we can watch it going down the road. And it does a pretty decent job, but if you go underneath a bridge, you'll momentarily lose signal. So yep. it works pretty good. Yep. And then we have, Jim just put these up not too long ago, a carbon monoxide alarm and a fire alarm, which right. is 
really cool. Yeah, and the fire alarm works because, you know, when we cook in you the truck, <laughs> just like at home, it goes off. Yes, it does. Oh, and I think we, I don't know if we mentioned, but we have an outlet uh, back here. That's what I was saying. And there's actually one behind the front seat, too. Right. So there's... Electrical there's, outlet. There we In the trucks, it's really important to have multiple electrical outlets because you're... In, right. You're in different small parts of the truck, just like a house. You want yeah. to have as many... The inverter in the can. truck is a uh, 3,000 watt inverter, uh, which allows us to have just about everything on in the truck at the same time. There are actually five electrical outlets, I believe, in the sleeper itself. There's two on the wall, one behind the refrigerator there, and two on the floor behind me where I'm standing. Um, and we'll show you those in a little bit. So it works pretty well. I want to go up here just for a second, Jude. That little cover right there, right there. is where our fantastic <laughs> fan is underneath that. And then I'll pull back here. That is our air conditioning. We have a rooftop air in here. Uh, and so it keeps stuff like really cold. Uh, in fact, you don't want to stand underneath of it because you'll freeze to death. Yep. So. And just comment on that. Make sure your filters get changed. Yes. Frequently and often because there's a lot of dust in these trucks. And then we have our under counter. Oops, sorry. <laughs> under counter refrigerator. Here's our refrigerator and freezer part. And um, I really like ours uh, because it gave us more counter space. And in this particular, what we have here. Turn the key off. So what happens when you don't turn the key off? That's what I have, really. Anyway, um, but it keeps things frozen really well in here. And refrigerator works awesome. Right. So I, and I just like to have the extra counter space. Right. As not, you can see, we have, uh, like I said earlier, we do not have a closet in the truck. And when we first started, we were like, oh, we need a closet to put our stuff in. But we found those hooks to put behind the seat. And truthfully, if I were, if the new truck won't have a closet in it. Yeah. Uh, we really like that. Um, the other part of it is, is with our FedEx uniforms too, they, when they switch the shirts, the shirts aren't wrinkled. They don't get wrinkled. Right. So, you know, we don't have to worry about hanging those up. Um, they're, they're really cool. Made so, out of cool material you don't so have to worry about. Go ahead and cover the elephant in the room. Wife. The elephant in the room. Hey, that's just a seat, right? Yes, <laughs> just a seat. I think my friend from college was asking about this, or um, Randy was asking about this. Uh, what do you do? We don't have a bathroom in this truck, right. obviously. Some There's, trucks do. Some trucks do, ours does not. And some have a bathroom and shower in it, but ours does not. Um, but for those emergency times, this is our porta potty. Right, and a funny story about the porta potty. When we first started talking about doing this, and I told Judy about this, the porta potty. She was just like, "There's no way I'm not going to have one of those in my don't, truck." Don't want it. <laughs> and honestly, today she would not do this unless we had that. It is so nice, convenient, and convenient, so convenient. Uh, because at night she will get up and go to the bathroom when I'm driving, typically, and so we don't have to stop the truck. She doesn't have to get out and go inside into the cold, into a rest area where, you know, there are times where one of us has to stay off the truck, and it's just so inconvenient and you get woke up you get outside and it's 40 degrees out at night and i was finding when we first started i had problems sleeping and i think yeah. that was part of it because i didn't want a porta potty in the truck it's you know it's not you know so it's it's something that you know maybe not the most things to discuss in polite conversation <laughs> but for, it's a it's a fact of life and for us it's a necessity yeah. uh, so we are yeah. little porta potty and it serves as a great seat uh so if we have company in the truck that's usually we're all set yep so. yep or we pull it around to sit, sit on top of that's why it looks nice with a towel and everything on it right um some of the trucks and i will if you want to go back down this way mm -hmm. um they will put it in in here you know that some of them will have slide outs and everything with the little porta potties on them and this actually this cabinet opens up on the outside too right yeah there is an access so door from the outside from outside so some people put them in here ours it just didn't work because they have a lip down there and we didn't tell them ahead of time that that's the way we wanted it done so um that's what happened and you probably saw our little hanger with our toilet paper on it yes. see how convenient that is and if you want privacy folks we have these curtains right too, you know that pull across sure if you're a big private person, which, you know, Jim and I, 30 years, you're not that private. All right. We're going to, I'm going to switch you places, let you go to the back here. Um, we're going to go to the back. Okay. What am I covering back here? Oh, just the seats. This behind here is our bed. Yeah. 
And we do have, we do store things underneath the bed, and it's usually just drinking things. Because normally through the week, the bed will be down, and we will leave the bed down pretty much all week. Yeah. Uh, it usually just gets put back and uh, just step back a little bit. Step back? Yeah. Can't get back too far, they're going to have to move out. To light your face is in a shadow. So, oh. Oh. Uh, My face is in a shadow. It wasn't a shadow. So anyway, we will leave that bed down during the week. And at the end of the video here, I'm going to lower the bed just to show you how it works and everything. Yeah. And um, if you can, if you can look at, at the seats, we have our pillows and blankets. We do not have to do that. Our bed will actually shut with all this stuff. But Jim and I like comfiness. And sometimes we like to not turn the heater on full blast. And so right. we'll just throw the blankets and stuff over top of us. Oh, and let's speak about the S-Bar heater because I don't believe we covered that up here. Oh, we didn't. So we have what's called an S-Bar heater in the truck. We missed that little gadget. Yes, we did. And that is the control for the heater. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a diesel-fired sort of small furnace. You turn that on, and it runs out of the diesel fuel out of our main tank. And it will keep this place boiling. You can turn it up to 90 degrees, and it will get to 90 degrees in here really quick. And yeah. so... And now you can show it down here. Yeah, on the floor... And you got to make sure that's actually the fan where the heater comes out of this. And then this has to stay open. That's an with, air intake. Without anything up against it. So when you're putting stuff under your bed, make sure those two things are. Right. In the summertime, totally. it's nice because we just cram all of our stuff all the way to the back because we don't need that. Yeah, because you actually want the air to get to yeah. this thing with the air conditioner on. Yeah. This is actually a vent panel that goes in underneath to underneath this seat, the driver's side seat. Uh, under there, there's where our uh, inverter is at and all of our electrical control equipment. Uh, the truck was built to actually have a USB printer was supposed to go up into the one of the cupboards, but our printer's too big. I've got a big old HP or a brother laser printer, and, you know, that's just the way it is. And there's one of our outlets. And there's another one on this side right behind the printer. Right behind the printer. And so as you can see, our uh, floor here, talk about our floor. Jude. Oh, our floor. I kind of forgot about that because I'm, we've had it for five years. Uh, a lot of the trucks have um, that were built at the time this truck was have the wooden floors in them. Laminate flooring. Laminate flooring. And I, I didn't realize they were going to do this, but they put this type of flooring down because this truck was already kind of pre-designed before we got it. But I really love this floor. <laughs> it's yeah. just like... It's just like kitchen linoleum. Yeah, is all, it, all is. it is is like linoleum. And all you do is just sweep it up and wipe stuff up. And nothing um, with the old wooden floors. If you spilt something on it, it would, you know, buckle up. and. Yeah, it's and a solid apart. piece of, of linoleum. A, yeah, it's a solid so, piece of floor. Yeah, it's not going to spill water and swell up yeah. or anything like that. Uh, as you can see, we have a couple of lights there. And yep. there's one up here, which we have to get replaced. Uh, and we've got under the counter lights, there's one over there. Yep. And there's map lights back here. Oh, forgot about the heater thing over here, too. Yeah. There's our... Uh, this is our bunk heater. When it's on. Or when the truck is on. And I know there's been some some issues with this, with some trucks. Or the older bunk heat, trucks, yeah. Where, where the bunk heat doesn't work. But this will actually... Heat the front too if, if yes. you had to if the truck was on because it gets really warm back yeah, here. It actually pulls uh, uh, from the uh, actual truck heating system. There are lines that run back from the heater in the truck, and that unit is actually underneath this seat, and that's actually uh, so. With it, but the truck has to be running and it has to be warm for it to work. Same way right. with the air conditioning, it does the same thing in the summer with the air conditioning. Yeah. And we don't, I don't run the air back here too much when we're no. using, I don't know why. Um, but then this is another, which I love, just the light beside the bed, you right. know, where you can flip on and off the light beside the bed. That's, that's an awesome thing to have. And I don't know, Jim, if you want, well, our windows. Yeah, you can show the windows. Oh, see our nice little window covers? This is to keep it dark inside, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't like it light. So sometimes in the summertime, we will open the windows up yep, and the slide. open the fantastic fan. There's a screen on it. You probably can't see in the video. Uh, so it keeps the bugs out. And so we just keep those latched to the window time. That is actually an emergency exit. Uh, if we something were to happen and we had to get out, we pull those red handles and the window comes right out. We can go right out the side. Go right out the side. And I guess these are snapped. And sometimes I 
leg? Oh, I did it the wrong way. I'll you do always, it. You Just always want to snap that one over there first behind the leg. Because that one doesn't no, that's all right. Okay. There, I got it. You got it? Yep. All right. So, anyway. And so. so, if you want to hold the camera, I will let the bed down. Okay. I didn't know if you want to talk about fuses or where those are located. Uh, well, the underneath this panel with all of our electrical stuff, there is a fuse panel on the outside of the truck that controls everything in the sleeper. Uh, these sleepers are built separate from the truck. Uh, like I've said before, uh, when they get these trucks, they start life as a day cab, and they basically cut off the rear of the, of the cab of right where, if you see that wooden piece in the floor there, that's basically where the old cab of the truck would have ended, and uh, up to the ceiling here where that wood piece is, that would be the actual truck. Uh, and then they cut off the top of the truck they extend uh, that portion there above Judy's head is, is part of the sleeper. And then uh, down here in the floor, they add it on. Um, so yeah, the, the truck starts out. So everything in the sleeper is in a separate fuse panel and underneath this seat than what you would find in the front. Uh, and so that electrical box uh, is just out there, inverter and everything else is in there. So like I said, if you want to show me here look at that there's Tim so normally like I said this stays oh we didn't put the table down either we want to well, do that I'll real show quick that. Um, so anyway uh, we have a table here which is normally you've seen us in a couple of videos where we're setting uh, either side by side yeah the thing I love about the double a sleeper tables is they fold up not every sleeper does uh, but this one does uh, okay I'm gonna go down a little bit yep. okay so, but this is basically, this is a support, uh, and you'll see when I fold it down, this actually supports the whole table. Uh, just release this latch, that locks into place, the wooden piece at the bottom, and then the table's here. Uh, so, on the weekends, this is what we do, put the table up during the day, and put the table down, it just raises up, push in on this, that raises right out of the way. Like I said, we have all this floor space. You know, Judy could actually do her exercises in here if yep. she wanted. So I'll go ahead and let the table down now, or the bed down. Uh, it's pretty easy. Now it just sort of falls down. And you can see it's a pretty good sized bed. I can't let it all the way down because we have the pillows and things in the, in the seat. I'll let me get up there and I can sh maybe okay. show the whole so the whole bed, it would it would normally go down. It's almost a you know a twin size bed. Uh, it's big enough for Judy and I to sleep on. It's, I hope better bigger than a twin size bed. Well, it's whatever it's size. It's like it a full size bed. Full size bed. <laughs> so it's more than enough room for her. You and I can't fit on a twin size bed. <laughs> and uh, so that's what uh, that's how we do it during the week. It just stays down. Everything's stored underneath. All right, you want to show that little latch button too for the. Bed, the door yeah. or the release there right a, there. There's a release for the bed, so it will actually lock into position when it's down. That's a safety thing, because if you were on the bed and rolled to the back of it and it wasn't latched, the bed could let up. That's what that yellow placard back there talks about. Yeah. Uh, there's actually been cases of, of guys dying because of sleeper bed. Oh, we didn't have to bring up the you know. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, the whole release death the and knob, dying thing. Uh, it latches up. If you see the black piece over there on the wall, that's actually the latch. Uh, and so it has a latch in either end. Um, so we let it back up. Latches into position. It's counterweighted, so it's actually very easy to let up and down, although Judy can't seem to figure out how to do it. I can't figure out the I stupid knob. <laughs> the knob, I can't, I can't get it to release so. or get, yeah. I'm, I'm one of those, I'm afraid I'm going to break something. And it just, it's just like, if I push too hard or pull too hard, it's going to break. And, yep. and then I don't do it. So that's the sleeper. We hope you've enjoyed the tour. Do you have anything else to say? Not that I can think of right now. I'm sure I'll think of something later, but you know, it's, it's what it is. This is our home away from home. That's true. And so. we really enjoy our little space. And we, you know, the thing about being in a sleeper and having a truck like ours um, and being away from home as long as we have been, or we are, whatever, is that, you know, we need to think small and not have a bunch of stuff 
you right. know, which we've had to come down. But I don't know. Back here, I think Jim showed it too, where we're, we got two sets of cabinets up there too. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's cupboards up here. We didn't even talk about the cupboards up here. <laughs> uh, so we, do, we do have cupboards. Those top cupboards, Jim, how far back do they go? Oh, they only go back about uh, Put 12 your hand inches. up there. They go back to about here. Okay. Um, so these are not very deep at all. The ones on the back wall are pretty decent, uh, but they're full. Yeah. I mean, we, you can't uh, really see the depth of it. If we did a really good job of this, we would have cleaned one of them out to show you. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's just really, really... Well, here. I'll show you. I'll show you in here. This is where we... Uh, these three cabinets, cupboards are our pantry. So if you want to see a mess... Oh, the cup. Yeah. Nope. You don't want to do that one. I'm not going to open that one. I felt something falling out there. So, yeah. Yeah, and there's drivers who keep their, there's very neat and uncluttered. Ours is, on the other hand, it's Jim and Judy. That's all I can tell you. We're unorganized. <laughs> so, so anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, and that's about all we have. If you like content like this, please like the video, subscribe to our channel, and uh, hit the little notification bell, Judy. Ding, ding. And we'll see you all in the next video. So long, everybody. Good night.